So hi, everyone. This is uh, one of my uh, casual catch-up conversations with friends. I'm with Joanne McCall. And uh, we've actually known each other for how many years now, Joanne? Seven? I think six, six or six, seven. Six or seven years. It's been a while. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. been a while. And uh, it's been probably three, four, at least years since we've talked. It has been a while. Too long. <laughs> Too long. long. <laughs> so um, we're just wanting to uh, learn what each other's working on, what seems to be working, um, how our perspectives have changed, and what we're what we're learning about doing business from the heart. And uh, I was just talking with, I was just recapping with Joanne, kind of what what's been changing in my business. And I was mentioning how now that I'm giving away all my content for free, Joanne actually knew me from the time in my business where I was selling all of my content, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and you were actually, Joanne, you're one of the, you're one of the few, you know, kind of people that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm talking with now recently that know my history way back then. And I was selling, you know, $2,000 programs. And most, most of the, most of the time people were buying these $2,000 programs because I really hyped up how great the content was. They really were buying the training sort of ideas, the knowledge, right? And then what came with it was some group coaching, never one-to-one, -one, but just group coaching. So now mm -hmm. in the past two years, since 2014, 2013, really, I started to make the decision, give away all my content for free and only make my money from doing one-to-one -one coaching. Now, mm -hmm. now that I'm doing it like two, two and a half years into it, I'm now brainstorming, uh, creating some group structure, but uh, let me get to that in a bit. So one thing I was just mentioning is that when I now I'm giving content for free, I have, I'm needing to really step up to the plate to create even better content than I was before. Cause the irony is when you're selling content, people don't really, and it's not, if it was like on Amazon where people could, lots of people could review it, then it's like, Oh, you can check out whether something is good before you buy it. But in our world of, you know, internet marketing, uh, there is no such Amazon review for $2,000 internet marketing programs. Mm -hmm. And so you just kind of have to buy it, trusting that all the testimonials are what you're going to experience too. And then you go in and then you see whether the thing was really as good as the testimonials said it would be. And in my case, and I think in the case of most of my peers, we, of course, use the testimonials from like the top 1% of people who bought and had great things to say about it. Um, and honestly, I think probably the, the majority of the people who bought my programs, they either didn't use it or they didn't use it fully or they got stuck somewhere and weren't, they didn't really try to come to the Q and A's and figure it out and really, or, or they just use it, it didn't work for them. And so they just kind of moved on or they got distracted by another program somewhere, which sometimes I was the one promoting other programs. Right. <laughs> so, so in other words, I was able to keep selling the same program over and over and over again without doing a whole lot of updating of the content. And now that I'm giving it all away for free. Okay. So when people pay lots of money, they naturally think, well, gosh, it's, it's $2,000, so it must be really good content. And that kind of illusion, I think, um, that colors the human mind uh, makes a difference, unfortunately, in the marketing of something. Because the higher the price, the human mind says, well, it must be more valuable. And then once they get the product, the, the, the perception that it's more valuable actually makes them think it's more valuable, even though that same content that I used to sell is not as good as the content that I'm giving away now for free. Mm. But the irony is now that I'm giving up for free, because it's free and there's no price on it, people naturally, by default, think that it must not be very valuable because it's free. And so therefore, I have to step up to the plate and really deliver value, really deliver effectiveness of the ideas and maybe a little bit higher quality production value or something like that. Back then, I was just recording telephone calls and selling them, basically, with some slides. Now I'm like, you know, you have to, you know, dress up a little bit and like <laughs> you know, make make some make some higher quality videos or whatever. I never used to make videos for my products. So anyway, I have to step up. 
In other words, the competition in the free market, ironically, is much higher than the competition in the paid markets. Um, and I know that. And financially, it is definitely uh, making a lot less money than it used to be. Um, gratefully, I am still doing okay. And I'm now really building for the long term. So, Joanne, it I sounds like, like It sounds like a spiritual practice to me. Yeah. Is it? It is. I mean. I, I told, yeah. I, I've, I feel like I was kind of reborn two and a half years ago. Mm. <laughs> it's reborn spiritually and reborn in my business. Mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, kind of started with a beginner's mind and says, you know what? Let me just try. Let me just try to get. Yeah. And as I've created content, I really have grown faster in a lot of ways than I did when I was just rehashing the same things and kept selling it, which I see a lot of internet marketers still doing. You know, they just, and they, they almost boast about it on some calls I hear, telesummits I hear, webinars here. They kind of boast, oh, I just created a program and I just keep selling it, you know, for months and years and people just keep buying it and I get lots of money and, and I was no longer okay with that. I couldn't stomach that. I mean, I just couldn't. Like, if I could stomach it, I would keep doing it because it's very <laughs> comfortable. I couldn't stomach it. So that's why I said I had to really create quality and I have to let the quality speak for itself rather than make the pricing give the illusion of quality. You know I, I mean? think it really speaks to your integrity. And also something I've always appreciated about you is your beginner's mind and you're willing to experiment and try things. I mean, you come up with an idea and you are out there with it. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, we <laughs> all could be better at it. You know, you're oh, very, very good at that. So. Yeah, yeah it's, that. Um, it definitely takes uh, willingness to, um, to fail. But the thing about failure, I notice online, nobody ever really has ever said anything bad about my things. You know, once in a while, it, in the past, really in the past two and a half years since I've changed, I've gotten almost no negative criticism. It's been amazing. In the past, because I was charging so much, I did occasionally get grumbles, you know. Um, but really, when we're trying to do the right thing, the worst thing that happens is silence. Hmm. that's crickets. really crickets it's it's, it's the word and and I, you know honestly i, I experience that every week because <laughs> i nowadays i make five videos a week not all five videos take off right i'm lucky if one of five videos a week gets above average likes but most of the time it's a couple of my really loyal supporters you know oftentimes liking it just because it's me and they like it and so Anyway, um, I, I was where we uh, left off before we started recording this was I was talking about how now two and a half years into just earning money from the one to one and giving it all away for giving all the content away for free. I'm now realizing that I'm experiencing something a little bit similar to what was happening be before. Before, when I was selling these programs, I had a large percentage, like I mentioned, who weren't using it or weren't getting the kind of results I was, I was hoping. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm giving away for free, I'm still actually getting a similar experience in terms of people are very nice to say, wow, that was helpful or that was nice, but very few people I'm able to actually follow up because it's all free out there, right? So very few people I'm able to follow up with and say, was that content, did that really change your life? Did that really change your business? And, and of course, it's much more fulfilling if I could see the fruits of my labor. Um, and so I'm now realizing that people need structure. That's my newest learning really for the past month mm -hmm. is, oh, people not only need good content because good content is abundant online. You know, yes. as I said, the, the free content market is far more competitive and far more crowded than the paid content market. So, People not only just need good content and they need good values behind that content, but they really, really, really need and will pay for structure. Mm -hmm. So this is why those seven day challenges, 21 day challenges, 30 day challenges, three month programs or whatever work. Uh, people like to buy them because they feel like, okay, now that I've, I'm in this community where everyone is kind of going to be doing this thing uh, and there's a set deadline for things, uh, I'm much more likely to get it done. And you were just mentioning that, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm thinking about creating like a monthly, each month going starting in July, I'm thinking of creating like a 21 day challenge. 
And I'm thinking, and you can give me your feedback on this because you've, you've really been around the block in all these different kinds of programs and, and created things yourself. I'm thinking creating, I ask my, my current clients, like I have these four tracks, which one are you most interested in? I have a, a track on um, you know, joyful productivity, like time management, energy management, that kind of thing. I could create a 21 day challenge around that. I have a track on optimizing your offering. So basically clarifying your niche, upgrading your, uh, how well, how well your, your service offering is to what the market wants, that kind of thing. So optimizing your offering, um, creating content consistently and enrolling new clients. So those four tracks mm -hmm. and what came back was that different people like different tracks, like all four were, were like interesting to people. So I was thinking like every month, I'm going to create this private Facebook group. Uh, you know, I'm going to create a private Facebook group that's just one time. And, and as people join, uh, join this community, um, each month I will create uh, four Facebook events in that group. Mm -hmm. And so each event will be one track. So those of you who are interested in joyful productivity, go and RSVP yes for that event. And I will be kind of keeping you accountable in that event page. Um, and you can, you're expected to come and update yourself, you know, once a day or once a week, whatever we decide to do. Um, so it's like, there's four event, event pages in this Facebook group and people will just kind of be interacting there. And if they have a, if they don't want to participate in the challenge, they just want general support and on their business, they just post in the Facebook group itself and then get that kind of support. Well, as we were talking about before we started recording, you yeah. mentioned the three-week challenge, and I told you about a friend of mine who started, who's doing a seven-day challenge that is really very, very successful. It's a video challenge in mm -hmm. his case. And what I'm finding is when it comes to structure, people are so busy now. It's cliche to say it. I mean, everybody's busy. Seven days, a lot of people are willing to commit to. Seven days feels really doable. Mm -hmm. I could do a video every day for seven days. There's a private group with it. And then if they want to continue on, of course they can. But And if they're done, they're done. But it's just seven days as compared to recently someone had a group that they were talking to me about, and it's a year long. Oh. And the thought of that is just like, you know, it gives me a headache. I just can't. And I, and I think I speak for a lot of people. That's, it's just too long. So yes. things, I think this is one way that things have really changed. And yeah. the internet and being online is maturing for people. Yes. And, and because there is so much content and so much coming at us, seven days for something we really want, I think most people are willing to do. Mm, okay. That's really helpful. That's really helpful. So uh, I'm... So yeah, I might try different lengths. I might try a 21 day. Uh, and when I say 21 day, I really should call it, maybe, I don't know, 21 day sounds nicer than three week challenge, I guess. Well, they say it takes 21 days to form a habit, yeah. right? Yeah, that's so true. That's good. Yeah, so, but, but I probably, I'm obviously not going to have something for them each of the 21 days, but it's more going to be like a once a week kind of, kind of thing. But I might actually end up doing seven day challenge, take a week break, and then another seven day challenge within a month. So that, that's another possibility. Um, but I, I want to turn it to, to you now. I want to hear what you've been learning. And maybe just because we've been recording and you, you haven't even in, introduced yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, so Joanne, I mean, how, how would you like to introduce? How do you like to introduce yourself these days? Well, I'm, I'm a publicist, as you know, that's what I do. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, the core of my being, I help yeah. people to get out there and be visible. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a former media insider. So I know how that works. And really, the well, what does that mean? I'm sorry, just to interrupt you. What does it mean to be a media insider? Well, a media insider is someone who's worked really in that side of the fence and mm. knows how media operates, how mm. they want to be approached and that okay. sort of thing. Ah. So as I became a publicist, I had that kind of insight as to how to approach mm. people. But the big distinction that I make now is between you media, because we're all media now, right? I mean, you're doing video and audio, we're all media. So there's you media, your content generation, wow. and then there's earned media. And earned media is someone else involved and it usually means you have some hoops to jump through. 
Right. And the beauty of it is often their platforms are huge. So you have this additional exposure and those on those bigger platforms who are interested in you can then come and opt into whatever you're doing, learn more about you, that kind of thing. Right. So it's another way to build, to build like your that. reach. Yeah. That's cool. So I work mm -hmm. a lot with authors, mm -hmm. yeah. authors and speakers. Yeah. And what do you, uh, what do you, um, maybe give me an example of how you would walk an author through what you do? Well, let me share with you someone I'm working with right now. Yeah. Um, he's actually been a client of mine off and on for the last I, 15 years or so. Wow, I've done great. several of his books. It's really mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, get this, two years ago, he, along with his team of like three, they did a cross-country bicycle tour. Wow. from the West Coast to the East Coast, interviewing 100 entrepreneurs along the way. That's incredible. Wow. And they, <laughs> they videotaped everything. And then they had a film crew behind them. They did all the behind-the-scenes uh, shootings, too, so that they're going to launch a movie, a documentary soon. So they did this trip that was two years ago. During that time or afterwards, he has written the book about it. It's called Main Street Entrepreneur. And um, he got a publisher, Entrepreneur Press, and now the book just came out in this last week. And now we're doing additional uh, media for him with, you know, um, Inc. Magazine and all these other, you know, I'm, I'm currently now doing that. So I'm helping to really um, launch the book and help people to understand what it's about and talking to media about it and they're covering it. and. Wow. Mike is just, I mean, Mike Blouser is his name, and he's just an incredible human being. He's fun to work with. He's like my ideal kind of person, you That's know, to work fun. with. Yeah. So I think he really shows how things have just turned around. I mean, it used to be you would write the book after you had done everything, right? You'd already... And that is what he did, but he went out and he did the interviews first with yeah. all the entrepreneurs. He gathered the information. From that, he synthesized nine key elements that all entrepreneurs have in common for being successful. That's mm -hmm. really what we're talking about. Got it. And, and so all that's done, and now the book comes out, and now the movie comes out. So nice. So that's, yeah. yeah. So you're reaching out uh, on his behalf uh, to these different media outlets um, what's, what have you noticed is working these days in terms of reaching out to influencers and get them to say, yes, we will feature this or, you know, George, the number one thing, and I think that this is a fundamental truth. I think it's always been true. You've got to have something unique and you have to have something that's different because when you think of earned media, they're pitched all day long, yeah. five days a week, at least probably seven. Yes. Um, and they're pitched all the time. They're hearing things all the time. So you really want to look at how are you different? What are you doing that's different, that's unique? Another one of my clients, she's a presentation expert. Uh -huh. But the beauty about her, we have all kinds of success with her because she offers tips that you haven't heard 50,000 times. Uh -huh. You know? And if you've heard it 50,000 times, media has heard it 200,000 times, you know, or more. So I can always, I could say to an editor or a journalist, I could say, listen, she can give you tips you have not heard before. Mm -hmm. And they're always intrigued by that. They're like, mm. really? Like what? Mm. And then I go to her and I say, I need some fresh, I need something new. And she yeah. can always deliver. Yeah. yeah. So for anybody who wants this kind of thing, if you're yeah. just writing your first book, if you're yeah. just starting your business, I mean, you just want to look at how are you unique? How are you different? Yeah. How are you helping people in an in a unusual way? Those are the kinds of things you want to be able to answer. So that it's, um, well, it basically, it's kind of like what Seth Godin talks about, the purple cow, mm -hmm. right? Like this, for those of you who don't know the story, like it's, you are driving along the road, a country road, you see lots of cows, um, nothing unusual about it. And then you're driving along, driving, Suddenly, you, something makes you turn. You, what is that? It's, <laughs> wild, <but> it's purple. <laughs> yeah, that got your attention because it's unique. It's different. So um, now, for someone who is, so here's the thing about here's the thing about unique. Uh, does it also need to be? Um, I mean, you might say useful. Yes. Yeah, that's that. Useful is good. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's solving someone's problem. It's helping someone out. It needs to either be educational or very entertaining or both. Right. Both right. is ideal. Okay. And, and so with, with Mike, right? Yes. Um, 
nine, nine tips or nine uh, success factors for entrepreneurs, that itself is not unique. Right. But what I'm hearing is that the story of him bicycling across the country and interviewing all these people, that's unique. Yes, very much so. Okay. Uh, but also, uh, the word entrepreneur, Silicon Valley has kind of taken it and given it a, this different definition of, you know, high tech. But listen, not everyone can start a Google or an Amazon yeah. or an eBay, right? Most people can. <laughs> but they can start their own little business yeah. in their own niche or mm-hmm. in their own hometown. Mm-hmm. And the book is called, you know, it's Main Street Entrepreneur. So it's really about okay. little towns and people who started a business and how they made it really successful. Yeah. The research is showing that technology is taking away a lot of jobs. Yeah. So now is the time that people need to create their own business. You yeah. know that. You yeah. do it. I know that. I do it. And there are a lot of people struggling trying to figure out how to do that. So this yeah. information and these tips, I think, are really helpful for people to, to begin that journey. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, talk to me about what, since we haven't talked in a couple of years, mm-hmm. um, what is, has there been any... Uh, has there been any change or shift that you have made in your strategy or in your way of working with clients or in your way of reaching out? Tell me a bit about that. I don't even know where to begin, George. I mean, that's such a great question. Yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Um, it changes all the time, but I have to say that I really love that. Mm. I mean, I love that. I find it interesting to learn and to try new things and to check things out. Sometimes I notice that some people are kind of afraid of that or they don't really, it kind of stops most them. People, most people are afraid of it. If they can churn that around and get really curious in trying new things, it can just make a huge difference. Yeah. So yes, in my work I do, um, I've become very collaborative with my clients. It used to be mm-hmm. a publicist you know, they were hired and they would just do the work and then let you know the results. But I really work with the person because then we're both, it's both of us making yeah. this happen, not yeah. just me doing it for you. Right. You know, it's, it's a real, um, it's a real partnership and mm. that's, that's it. That's a difference, but I mm. love that. I just, I think that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So when it comes to learning new things, I mean, when it comes to marketing, gosh, it's, changing, um, you know, by the hour, it seems. Um, what have you had to change or make do differently with regards to marketing or, or your own clients marketing? Yeah, that's a, yeah, well, for myself, you know, it's funny you say that, George, because I think it was like, it was probably about five years ago when you and I were working together and I, I did a head slap and I said, oh my goodness, Joanne McCall is one of my clients. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all my business had been referral, always had been referral. Yes. I came to a point where I realized I have to be out there. I mean, yes. I, I have to demonstrate what I'm helping other people to do. Yeah. It wasn't always that way. Yeah. Right. So now I'm doing a lot more video. I've been putting video out there. I'm doing, you know, some Facebook. It, again, it's, it's like an experiment. Yes. Um, I have a group that I work with of people who want to learn how to do their own publicity. Mm. And, and so I have a group and, and share with them different techniques and strategies that I'm trying and what's worked and maybe what isn't working anymore. So that's, that's really helpful. It's helpful to them and it's helpful to me because mm. what I said last year or even a few months ago, yeah. it may be different today. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. I, I find that um, that's how I've grown the most is by uh, sharing everything I can um, in terms of what I'm learning. Yeah. And that, that, this is why I encourage everyone to, if at all possible, to create and share content consistently. I keep saying that because the more we do it, uh, the more we tap into this, what we find is, a, is an endless, bottomless reservoir of wisdom, knowledge, uh, experience even, uh, insight. And if we don't give it away, um, we are not really digging as deep as we could. Again, I, I know not everyone uh, agrees with my thought about giving all content away, but what I mean is just giving it either for free or f- as a product uh, to continually be as prolific as we can. For each person, it's different. Right now, I'm making five videos a week, um, but 
uh, maybe in, you know, three, four years ago, I would have been proud to make one video every two weeks. Um, so I, I feel like it's, that is really, that's been like a, like a big key for me is to, is to, is to create as prolifically as I can and as much as I can engage with my audience to see which of those pieces were most helpful. That's a really excellent point because I think in order for new ideas to come through us, we have to clear the way of the ones that are currently up for us. Yes. And that's what I hear you saying. You know, you've yes. got to put it out there because then more can flow through. Yeah. I absolutely think that that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally, totally. Yeah, and the, the great thing, of course, is as we put it out there, uh, not only are we growing, we're helping other people, and we're getting noticed. We're getting noticed by others, and people can share it forward. I mean, social media, it's amazing, right? Talk about, talk about you know, each one of us being a media channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Another thing I remember learning from you that I think of often is the, you, would, you would say, don't try to remember everything in your mind. Write it down. Your brain is for brilliance, not trying to remember to pick up the cat food. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes, yes. It's so true. Yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah. And, and yes, what, right, exactly. It's like the library we have of wisdom in here, let's get it down ideally and then share it, right? Ideally share it so that it can have its own legs and help other people and multiply value and multiply kind of wisdom and experience for everyone. Um, so what have you noticed so, so in, in the past couple of years, uh, you have worked with a lot of people. Um, now, now I'm talking in terms of partners, um, in terms of like colleagues and peers. Um, have you noticed yourself um, working better with some, uh, less with others? Any kind of changes there or any um, kind of learnings you've made? Because I know collaboration, I'm, again, relearning the importance of collaboration uh, and and sort of for, for me these days it's like I, um, I I essentially gave up on a lot of my partnerships in the past you know because I mean those partnerships that where they promoted me but then it was required that I promote them mm -hmm. um, that was how I made a very good living the first three, four, you know, years of my business. Mm -hmm. And because I could no longer stomach the way that we were selling, I couldn't, I, I said no to the continued promotion, promotional partnerships that didn't feel true to me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm relearning how to collaborate, you know, cause I've been, I've been out of the collaborations for really a few years now. And so like, I'm kind of jumping back. Uh, so I love to, I mean, you're such a, you're so good at, you're so good with people. You know, I'm just curious, mm -hmm. what, what, what are you learning in terms of collaboration and peers and you know, relationships? You know, I get better and better, George, all the time about knowing who I'm going to have fun working with and who it just isn't going to work. Yeah. And I've, I, there are certain things that I look for. And um, if I know that something isn't going to work for me, then mm -hmm. I refer them on to someone else. Mm. I won't take it on. I say I probably say no to more than I say yes to. Yeah. Uh, but that's because I, I want to have fun and, <laughs> and I want to learn and I want to grow and help yeah. people to do that. And if someone um, is in a different place, then, yeah. you know, there are others that will work for them. Yeah. So that's, that's what I do. Yeah, exactly. I, I like that. Yeah, I feel like I'm learning again to um, – particularly pay attention to what it is that my audience needs. And it's this kind of very subtle observation. Okay, what is it my audience needs? And then also what is it that the partner's audience needs? And is there a match there? I mean, if there's a cross promotion, but if not, it's just stating the case very, very frankly, Hey, you know, looks like your audience is, there's this need here. There's a gap here. Um, and it's a gap that I can fill and do you agree or can, you know, is there, can I help? Can I be a resource? You know, I think, I think, um, I'm learning to do this. I tell my clients to do this. I feel like not enough people do that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
paying attention to what different audiences need and how they can be the key or they can really fill the gap anyway. That's not being covered there. Um, and at the same time, noticing what my audience needs and what resources I can therefore bring. Um, do, you, uh, do you ever kind of, I don't know how to say this, tune into the other person's energy, kind of the way they're, because language gives a lot of way, yeah. just how yeah. people talk about things. Yeah. And do you ever, through those kinds of exchanges, determine maybe this wouldn't be such a good fit, just based on someone's energy? Yeah, um, I, I feel like, uh, well, I mean, I think with energy, we could mean a lot of different levels of yeah. that. I think for me, I, uh, sometimes I, I, I say that I'm so, um, uh, I'm so dense in terms of the energetic uh, um, sensitivities, but, but really, I think I probably sense it naturally. And I feel like, is there, what I'm looking for is, is there a feeling of mutual support? Mm -hmm. Right? It's mm -hmm. like, and, and in the past, the mutual support was like, well, can we make each other money? And we don't care if one person really likes the other. I mean, not likes, but like has the long-term interest of the other in mind and heart. And now I'm much better at, sensing into that it's like is there a, a is there a feeling of long term here's the thing is there is there a a, a commitment to the long term well being of one another mm -hmm. and is there a long term is there a commitment to the long term well being of each other's audiences if mm -hmm. together i like that you know, absolutely so, so tell me how are you getting a sense of energy or how how is that uh, working for you so when you talk about long term, I, I've usually most of the time really looked at long term, such as um, media, for example. I may not get a story with someone now, but mm -hmm. a few years from now, I mean, I remember, you remember, you know, the show Fresh Air with Terry Gross? Yes, of course. Okay. So one of the producers there, it took me 10 years to connect wow. with her. Yeah, I sent her Christmas cards. You know, oh my gosh. Time. Yeah, because I wanted to get to know her. Yes. And I was going to get to know her and I didn't know when. And so I like that kind of long-term approach to things. And the yeah. same with my clients. I've got clients that I've worked with, they come back, you know, when they have a new project. Yeah. Um, I, I like that. I like to get to know people really well. Um, I don't have to work with them all the time. We can do campaigns here and then a pause and then a campaign again. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find that very rewarding mm. and, and fulfilling. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, can, you can almost talk shorthand to the person because you get to know each other so well. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. So, yeah. so is there anything uh, on the horizon that's exciting for you? Um, I mean, it, in terms of like the development in the market or kind of what's possible for us coming down the pike, anything like that that's interesting yeah. to you these days? I mean, first of all, I just want to, and I, I asked the same question of you too, yeah. uh, but I have got such amazing people that I'm working with right now. So I'm just so grateful, you know, to attract people who ha are up to such interesting things. So when I'm talking with someone, they're telling me about their book or their project and I get all excited, then it's, it's just r really fun. Yeah. Um, I think that looking forward, you know, there'll always be new platforms. There'll always be new strategies. There's new things coming down the pike. I really think the main thing we need to really embrace is learning and learning quickly. Yeah. And I, I heard this story from this description from Richard Bandler, and I think it's a really good one. I'd love to share it. And that is our brains automatically learn quickly. If, we ha if I had like a, 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 a pad of paper with stick mm. figures drawn on it, mm. and, and I went... <laughs> and it showed the stick men standing up and walking across and doing something in the other side of the room, you would get that. But if I handed you one card, one, one every week, you oh. would have no idea yeah. what was going on with that. Yes, yes. So the brain sees patterns, it gets it. So I yeah. personally, I think that that is exactly what all of us have to be doing is yeah. really opening up and embracing mm -hmm. the belief that learning is good and we can do it and we can do it really quickly. So I love that. Yeah. You're instilling faith in our human abilities 
to um, it almost like what you're suggesting is to kind of rather than forcing it to kind of absorb and just to be willing to stay open, continue to allow information to come to us um, and, and be, um, I guess, even relaxed enough to allow the patterns to emerge, you know, because I think sometimes when we force it and we're like trying to figure something out, um, we're wasting a lot of energy. Whereas if we kind of calmly let the information come to us, um, trying to solve a problem or um, trying to come to a new insight, we just kind of let the information come to us and then calmly, um, it does come. It yes. does come when the, when the time is right, the patterns emerge and we go, oh my gosh, how come I didn't see that before? How come I didn't have that insight before? Yeah, your frustration shuts everything down. So yeah. when you start to get frustrated, notice it early and yes. go do something else. Yes. Go for a run, go for a walk, yes. go play with the dog or the cat. Yes. How are yes. your kitties doing? Doing great. They're doing yeah, good. great. Okay. Right, right, here, right here in the oh, right here. I, can even, I don't know if I can even show Aww. them. Yeah. Oh, well, there's, um, I might, am I showing the right? Oh, there's, that, yeah, there's a cat right there. I know it's kind of, and then there's another cat right there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, <laughs> how cute. And then, and then I have a, I have a new dog. I don't you know. do? Yeah, I have a dog now. Oh, I um, didn't know that. Yeah, Buddy, and uh, he's, he's super cute. I, he's kind of taken over our lives. <laughs> Cats and <laughs> dogs are extremely that. different. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I, I, and one more thing I'll say about, about kind of what, even with all the new platforms that are building, I think it's really important to remind ourselves that it's easy to lose touch with the importance of relationships. Mm. Um, and, and this is why I'm kind of doing these kindred spirit conversations again, because um, there's this illusion that we can just learn some new platform and put our things out there and it's going to go viral. And, um, the truth I've learned over these seven years, and I've failed at it multiple times, is if we are willing to help the one, truly, truly help the one, wh whoever that is today um, that we're engaging with, it could be in a conversation like this, or it could be um, someone commenting, uh, asking a question on our, you know, over email, or, or it could be with a client, or it could be someone we see in a group, they have a question. Like if we could really help the one, um, it, it doesn't matter what platform we're using. If you're using Facebook, Snapchat, whatever. It's like whatever platform we're using over email, you know, help the person that we're with, love the person we're with, and we, we stand out. But, but really, I think it's the, it's, the, it's the thing to do that makes our lives fulfilling and makes our business, makes businesses worthwhile, you know? And I'm learning that again. <laughs> I'm relearning it. <laughs> you know, the biggest failure is if you have total business success and you're unfulfilled. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, being successful in your work and at the same time living the art that is life. Yeah. Is is the key. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's the key. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a good place to end our recording. So I'm just going to stop the recording. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Yeah. And, uh, I'll, I'll Joanne, I'll include the links to your website, websites down below. Thank you.